After the massive success of the reunion tour, the next logical step for Kiss's original lineup was to record a new album. Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley wanted Bob Edgren to produce, but he was unavailable. They instead turned to Bruce Fairbairn, who had produced Bon Jovi, Slippery When Wet, and New Jersey, and Aerosmith's Permanent Vacation, Pump, and Get a Grip. Unfortunately, the album is somewhat controversial. Despite being touted as a reunion album, Peter, Chris, and Ace Fraley are barely featured. Peter played drums on only one song, while Ace only played on two. Three, if you count the Japanese bonus track. Kevin Valentine played drums on the rest of the album, while Tommy Thayer played lead guitar. Paul may have also provided some leads, but it is mostly Tommy. Now, let's be clear. None of us were there. None of us know what happened. The various people involved are weirdly vague about these sessions. Gene and Paul claim that Peter and Ace refused to show up, choosing instead to communicate through their lawyers to demand more money. This was somewhat supported by an interview Eric Singer did in which he discussed Ace's guest star appearance on the ESP album. We actually got Ace to come down and do a guitar solo, mm -hmm. and Gene and Paul couldn't get Ace to come to the studio to record the Kiss record, but yet they yeah. were wondering, how did you get him to come down to play on, we, he played on Foxy Lady, he did the solo, the Hendrix song, and he, we were, they were wondering, how did you get him to come down to the studio to play with you guys? They couldn't get him to the studio, so it was kind of funny. Peter and Ace say that they weren't invited. Peter claimed that Gene and Paul actually offered to pay them to not play on the album. Engineer Mike Plotnikoff said that it was Fairbairn's decision. He claims that during rehearsals, Fairbairn decided that Peter and Ace weren't good enough to play on the album. Obviously, someone is lying. But for right now, we don't know. It's also important to mention that Paul did not get along with Fairbairn. He felt the producer chose the worst songs from the demos and, generally, did not know how to make a Kiss record. Paul was so dissatisfied that he ended up going into the studio on weekends to cut tracks on his own. Psycho Circus was released on September 22, 1998. Written by Paul and Kirk Cuomo, Bruce Kulick played bass. It's bombastic signature kiss. It's got a great melody and awesome guitar parts. The solo is especially good. Interestingly, Tommy's leads are much more interesting and fresh on the record in which he's supposed to be pretending to be Ace than the ones where he is the official guitarist. In regards to production, I do like the drum sound, but I don't love the overall mix of the album. It needs more bass. Written by Gene, Bruce played the backwards guitar intro, and that's because this song was demoed for Carnival of Souls originally. Instead of re-recording it, they decided to just use Bruce's intro from the demo. The song has an awesome riff, a great melody, and the lyrics are cool and evocative. It's also cool to hear a Carnival of Souls style song with better sonics. Written by Paul, Holly Knight, and Cuomo, Bruce played bass on the chorus. The song is so much fun. It's got a cool riff, a great bass line, and a solid solo. I love the chorus, and Valentine kills it on drums. Written by Ace and Carl Cochran, this is the only track on the record that features all four original members playing their respective instruments, which is ultimately kind of sad because they sound really good. The song has a great riff and a cool bass line. I particularly love the dueling guitar parts during the chorus. The melody is great, Peter kicks ass, and the solo is amazing. Written by Gene, Paul played bass and Gene played guitar. I think the song has a great melody and wonderfully sappy lyrics. I especially love the bridge. I think that's amazing. I think this is a good place to talk about how random this album is. There's a leftover from Carnival of Souls, songs that sound like leftovers from Crazy Nights. There's no consistency or flow to the album. No one seemed to really have a vision for it. by Gene, Ace played the solo. It's also the only Kiss song to feature all four members sharing lead vocals, which I love. It's kind of fun. The lyrics are a solid idea. Gene took interview quotes from each member and worked them into a song in which the four members argue during the verses, but in the chorus, stop and claim that they're now above all that bullshit because the fans are more important. Which is what makes the song so frustrating. It's hypocritical. 
Gene isn't practicing what he preaches. It's utterly bizarre to write and record a song like this when Peter and Ace were barely involved. I will say the guitar solo is great, but the spoken part at the end is dumb. This is written by Paul and Knight. The guitars are cool, especially the solo. I love the chorus and the pre-chorus. It's a really fun song. Super catchy. Written by Paul and Ezrin, Bruce played bass, Shelley Berg played acoustic piano, and Ezrin played the Fender Rhodes. Peter sang lead vocals, although he didn't drum on the track. Despite some pretty orchestration, the song is corny and lame. The bridge is okay, but it feels like a worse version of Hold Me, Touch Me. It's also frustrating because starting with this record, Kiss gets into a bad habit of trying to mathematically figure out what makes a Kiss record. So Peter has to sing a ballad. Ace has to sing a song about space. Instead of doing what comes naturally, it feels a little too calculated. Written by Paul and Bruce, the latter played rhythm guitar. The guitar parts are all amazing, and I love the lyrics. They're really evocative and interesting with a great vocal performance from Paul. This song also got them sued because of how similar it is to Alice Cooper's I'm 18. Written by Gene, Berg played the acoustic piano. The song is appropriately epic. I love the lyrics, and the orchestra echoing the Psycho Circus solo is really cool. It's a great way to end the album. Written by Gene, Ace is featured on guitar and lead vocals. This song was a bonus track on the Japanese release of the album. The riff is kind of boring, but I do enjoy the lyrics and the chorus is great. The solo is cool as well. Psycho Circus peaked at number 3 and was certified gold a month after release. The album never made it to platinum status. The lead single, the title track, made it to number 1 in the mainstream rock tracks and earned the band their one and only Grammy nomination. We Are One did not chart, while You Wanted the Best made it to number 22 on the mainstream rock charts. I Finally Found My Way was released as a single in Sweden, but did not chart. The ultimate tragedy of the album is that it broke the original lineup. There was a sense of camaraderie on the reunion tour that was destroyed during the making of this album. You can tell watching footage from this tour, they are all in much worse physical shape and look miserable. The tour tried to integrate 3D screens as their big gimmick, which sometimes worked and sometimes did not. The cost of the effect resulted in the tour losing money, and the tour did not do as well as the reunion. So it was decided to put Kiss out of its misery and do a farewell tour. I have mixed feelings about the album. Beyond the disappointment of it not being the original lineup, my main criticism is the lack of a consistent tone and style. I like most of the songs as individual pieces, but the record doesn't come together and is ultimately such a disappointment of what it could have been.